Welcome to the implementation of the controller, the uh, tic-tac-toe class in this case. I'm just adding a constant at the top, uh, this define called debug it, and I'll set to true. I'm just using that as a flag to turn on and off extra comments being sent out to the screen. And uh, you can do this with the error reporting levels as well, but I find this is uh, easier because it's not really error, it's more feedback. These are the game constants. I've got a game ID on a sign, and the game states are the player states and the cell states. So they're the main things we want there, and an empty grid. Now in the constructor, I'm going to actually fill out. Uh, first, I'll show you kind of a debug line. I'll say if debug it, then I'm going to echo uh, the actual created class name, and you can use the double underscore class in uppercase double underscore for getting the class name by default and then you can use the double underscore line double underscore to actually get the line number that this occurs on so you'll see we use this further on but I'll be using a double underscore method which uh, actually gets the method of the class as well now I'm going to set up the two DAOs, uh, the player DAO I'm going to use the DAO factory and because it's a static function I use the two colons get player DAO and they'll return that and set it and then I'll get the game DAO, which again uses the DAO factory and get game DAO. So that's all from the DAO objects that have been generated. And remember, the game DAO has got those extra functions we've added. Now, after this, I'm going to call the initialize function, which will go through and set all the properties of this class as well as possible. And I'll pass the player name and the game ID onto this. Now for the initialize section, you can see we've just got the player name and game ID. Again, I'm going to set the player type to an unknown. So again, we're just initializing all the member properties of this class. Uh, we want the game state to set to uh, unknown. And this should match our game state diagram and sequence diagrams. And then I'm going to use the isSet function to see whether the game ID has been set. And if it is set, then I'm going to use this and I'm going to set the actual member variable game ID um, to that. Now you see there that I prefix any of the member variables of this class with M, uh, any sort of input variables with I, and any local variables with L. And so if the game ID isn't set, I'm going to set it to game ID unassigned. Now you see there I use the self in two colons, so that's like the static operator, but this is for this particular class, and it's getting this uh, default type. And you see there I then define the grid to uh, empty grid, and then the other play name to nothing. And that's pretty much all the main variables we want to initialize. Now, if we do have the play name set, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna check this, then I want to go in and search to see whether the player name already exists in the database. So this is where we're going to use our first DAO uh, query. And uh, again, we're going to use the DAO object. And because it's a player uh, object, then we're going to use the M uh, player DAO to get that. Then we're going to try and use the default load function that's created for you, pass in the player name. And if that doesn't equal null, meaning it's found something, uh, then we're actually going to use that name. Now, if it is null, which is what this if statement's about, then we want to just by default insert this new player name. So it's a really quick hit and miss uh, game uh, new player insertion. So th in this case, we're just going to add players straight away. There's going to be no real validation. So if someone types in the wrong name, uh, they'll actually just be added as another player and uh, these would be improvements on making the system a little bit more secure, robust in the future. And so in this case, if we insert a new player, they by default have no game because they've basically not played before. And remember, this comes from the state diagram that uh, you should be referring to. Other than that, if we do have a player, we, we call the reconstruct game because player exists they might have a game and that's our next function we're going to write. You can see here I've actually just pasted in all the extra comments now so you can see all the extra debuggets and the else's uh, for the different uh, errors that can occur and also just feedback as to what it's actually doing and so it's good to turn this on and see what's happening and I generally have this turned on all the time so you can see exactly what's going on 
which is quite helpful when you don't have uh, an easy way to debug it. So in the re reconstruct game, I'm going to just check whether the play name for this class has been set. If it has been set, then I'm going to check whether the actual game uh, ID is minus one. And in this case, we're going to go through and we've got M game Deo, and we're going to use that. We're going to query by play name ordered and we're going to get the play name. So what this is going to do is actually use the play name to search the game table and it's going to see if there is an actual game record and it'll get the latest and greatest one. In this case, once we've got that, we then want to check the grid state of that game. So whether they were still playing the game or whether they had uh, just finished the game and then we should, should display the actual results of the game anyway. So if we find a game, we then want to query by this actual game ID and we order it to get the final game state of the game and then we use this local variable test state and we're just going to store that and then once we've got that we basically this L test state is going to say what is the grid state for this game we've found and we're going to pass in the grid to get grid game state and we'll be writing this a little bit later and once we've got this L test state, this will represent a particular game state that uh, this grid is at. And we're going to just check whether it's uh, actually at like an X turn or an, an O turn and then react on that accordingly. Now you always remember that you use the double equal operators for the comparison and also watch the case of your variables. You'll also watch when you type the this operator for this class that uh, you then don't use the dollar sign in front of the member variable name with after the pointer and so this is something to watch out for. It's the same with the L game local variable there where it's actually the object that has the different column names so the game object that's created by the Deo generator and again we don't have the dollar sign in front of game ID and remember the game ID there has the lowercase g and that's what I was saying watch out for from the generated uh, basic database classes so once we've got that we um, if we are an X turn or an O turn we're going to set the game ID to that game we've found we're going to set the game state to the state that the get grid game state is validated the grid to and we'll update the actual grid of this game to that particular grid. Now if the game is not minus one, meaning it is a valid game ID, then we can basically use that game ID to find the particular game. And this is where we're going to use the query by game ID ordered, and this is going to order it in the opposite way in a descending manner, and that descending manner will then give us the latest and greatest grid game state for that game. So once we get the grid, we then go through and then we check the grid game state. And again, this will update the game to whether it's the O turn or the X turn or whether it's an X win or an O win. And finally, once we've done that, so we've either got a game, uh, possibly found a game if, if it was minus one, or we've got a valid game if the game ID was not minus one. But either way, we're now just going to just check whose turn it is and validate whether it's this particular player's turn or it's the other player's turn. And either way, it'll either allow the player to make a move in the game or not. So in this case, if the player name equals the player name that was just re retrieved of the last game record, then we could say that this game state, uh, if it equals uh, X turn or if the game state equals the X win, then we could pretty much have uh, a player that is the O player. And also it could be a draw state as well. So here you can see we're going to just set the player type and we're going to actually define that player type based on that. So all we're doing here is just working out from the grid whose turn it was up to and then look at kind of the game state we've actually got from this record and then from that game state and the person's turn we can define whose go it was and basically who's the X player and who's the O player. 
Now, once we've got this, if we know one player is a particular name, then this record uh, will have possibly the other player's name. But uh, because these ones are matching, it means there's probably another game record in there that has the other player's name. Remember, we don't really link them in this table. So this other player name, uh, we'll have to query the database. And so here we're using the query get other player name, and we're passing the game ID and player name. So remember, that's the one that gets the other record where the player name does not equal this player, but it's actually the other player you're after. And if that's not null, then we'll set the other player. Now, if the player name doesn't equal the record of the, the we got from the database of the last game, uh, then obviously the record we've got is not this particular player's go, but the other player's go. So now we're going to set this other player's name to this player and go through and set it the opposite way. Again here I've just added the debugging information and uh, that's it for the first part of our implementation.